Welcome everyone to today's lecture on the various aspects of skeletal trauma imaging. As medical professionals, it is crucial to have a comprehensive understanding of fracture classification systems, radiographic evaluation of fractures, bone healing, imaging modalities in skeletal trauma, and the evaluation of specific types of trauma such as pediatric skeletal trauma, dislocations, polytrauma, pelvic trauma, non-accidental trauma, spinal trauma, and the identification of trauma imaging pitfalls. Now, let us start by discussing the importance of fracture classification systems. Fracture classification is essential for effective communication, treatment planning, and patient care. The AU slash OTA classification system categorizes fractures into three main types and further classifies them based on location and pattern. Radiologists play a crucial role in providing important information to guide decision making by the healthcare team. Next, we will explore the radiographic evaluation of fractures. Radiographs are often the initial imaging modality used to evaluate fractures. They provide essential information regarding fracture location, displacement, angulation, and comminution. Standard radiographic views include anteroposterior, lateral, and oblique projections. Additional views, such as stress views, may be needed to assess for subtle injuries or potential ligamentous involvement. Radiographic assessment must be thorough and meticulous to ensure accurate diagnosis and appropriate treatment planning. Next, let's explore the bone healing process. In the third section of the video on radiology of skeletal trauma, we will discuss the bone healing process. There are three phases, inflammatory, reparative, and remodeling. Radiologists need to understand this process to distinguish normal healing from complications. Next, we will explore various imaging techniques used in skeletal trauma. The use of radiographs as the initial imaging modality for fractures is common. However, other modalities such as CT, MRI, and ultrasonography have specific roles. CT is useful for complex and intraarticular fractures. MRI is valuable for soft tissue assessment and spinal cord injuries. Ultrasonography is mainly used in pediatric fractures and surface fractures. Radiologists need to understand the indications and limitations for each modality to provide optimal patient care. Next, we will explore pediatric skeletal trauma. In the pediatric skeletal trauma section, we will be discussing injuries to the bones in children. These injuries can be complicated to diagnose and treat because of factors like growth plates. Growth plate injuries, also known as Salter-Harris fractures, require careful evaluation to prevent growth issues. Radiology plays a crucial role in assessing the extent of the injury, determining if the growth plate is affected, and guiding treatment decisions. Radiologists must have a deep understanding of fracture patterns and normal bone growth in children to make precise diagnoses and avoid unnecessary interventions. Fractures can cause complications like non-union, malunion, infection, and avascular necrosis. Radiology helps detect and treat these issues. Non-union is when a fracture doesn't heal properly and malunion is when it heals in the wrong position. Infections can occur after open fractures or surgeries and avascular necrosis can affect joints. Radiologists help identify these complications to assist in treatment plans. Let's now focus on imaging dislocations. The evaluation of polytrauma patients involves a systematic approach to identify and prioritize injuries. Radiologists play a critical role in this process by performing comprehensive imaging studies to assess for fractures, dislocations, and other traumatic injuries. Advanced imaging techniques, such as CT or MRI, are often required to fully evaluate the extent of injuries and guide appropriate treatment plans. Polytrauma encompasses multiple injuries from high-energy mechanisms involving different body systems. Radiologists are crucial in evaluating and managing polytrauma patients. Whole-body CT scans in the trauma bay help identify fractures, organ and vascular injuries, and spinal cord damage. Prompt and accurate interpretation of these scans is vital for appropriate interventions and reducing complications. Radiologists must be familiar with imaging protocols and key findings in polytrauma cases. Now, let's shift our attention to assessing pelvic trauma. Pelvic trauma poses a significant challenge due to the complex anatomy and potential for life-threatening hemorrhage. Radiographic evaluation, including pelvic radiographs and CT scans, assists in identifying pelvic fractures, assessing fracture stability, and detecting associated injuries, such as bladder and urethral injuries. Radiologists must understand various pelvic fracture classification systems to communicate effectively with the surgical team and guide appropriate management. Prompt recognition of pelvic fractures and associated injuries is crucial for optimizing patient outcomes. Now, let's delve into the topic of non-accidental trauma. Non-accidental trauma, also called child abuse, requires cooperation between healthcare professionals, social workers, and legal authorities. 
radiologists play a crucial role in detecting skeletal injuries suggestive of abuse and differentiating them from accidental injuries. Key findings include metaphysial, rib, and long bone fractures in non-ambulatory infants, as well as pattern fractures like corner or bucket handle injuries. Radiologists must recognize these suspicious findings and report them diligently to ensure the safety of the child. Spinal trauma evaluations require a systematic approach to identify injuries and assess spinal stability. Imaging modalities such as radiographs, CT scans, and MRI play essential roles in identifying spinal fractures, ligamentous injuries, and spinal cord compromise. Radiologists must be familiar with spine trauma imaging protocols, specific fracture patterns, and potential complications such as spinal cord compression or injuries to adjacent nervous structures. Accurate and timely imaging interpretation facilitates appropriate management decisions in these potentially devastating injuries. Finally, let's explore some common pitfalls in trauma imaging. Despite advancements in imaging technology, there are several potential pitfalls that radiologists must be cautious of when interpreting trauma imaging studies. Some common pitfalls include inadequate imaging technique, incomplete imaging protocols, poor patient positioning, and imaging artifacts. Knowledge of these pitfalls helps radiologists recognize and address potential diagnostic pitfalls, ensuring accurate and comprehensive reporting. In conclusion, it is vital for healthcare professionals to comprehend fracture classification, radiographic assessment, bone healing, imaging modalities, and trauma evaluation to effectively manage skeletal trauma patients. Consideration of complexities such as pediatric trauma, complications, polytrauma, pelvic and spinal trauma, and potential imaging challenges allows radiologists to make substantial contributions to patient care.